Here you can see a healthy control patient with a normal left atrial strain and here you can see a patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, normal EF, atrial fibrillation and the LA strain in this patient is very low, only 9%. And this is representative for the different stages of diastolic dysfunction. In this very recent study, the authors found that in normal patients have very good LA strain, but according to the degree of diastolic dysfunction, LA strain is diminished. So we can pick up gradual changes in correlation to the degree of diastolic dysfunction. But the question is, can we even pick up changes in patients who are only at risk for diastolic dysfunction? And in this large study here, um, a large cohort of patients were examined, healthy patients, and those who had underlying diastolic dysfunction already had decreased LA strain, and those with severe diastolic dysfunction have a high degree of reduction of LA strain. So we can even pick up subclinical changes by LA strain. And this makes this method for me quite interesting. Yeah, I think that's true because I think I've seen some data that shared the thought that left atrial strain reduction correlated with an increase in left ventricular end diastolic pressure much greater than the relationship of left end ventricular end diastolic pressure to the traditional E over E prime ratio. And maybe this is a lot easier to do because it's only one parameter and we're measuring just those two basal segments. So should we be avoiding doing the E over E prime and just looking at left atrial strain or, or should we continue with traditional diastolic function evaluation until we learn more about this left atrial strain? I think we have to stick to the traditional parameters but maybe incorporate this new parameter. And recently we have compared invasive hemodynamic measurements, wedge pressure measurements, in patients in sinus rhythm and atrial fibrillation to LA strain. And you can see that in patients with sinus rhythm, the LA function is still preserved. But in patients with atrial fibrillation and a higher wedge pressure, the LA strain is in a, on a very low level. So it even correlates with hemodynamic parameters.